You're committed to your workouts and building muscle. Naturally, then you might have wondered how much muscle can you realistically gain? Well, today I'm going to share what science has to say about natural muscle growth potential. Well, first things first, muscle growth isn't finite. In fact, we often see beginners achieving rapid muscle growth after the first few months of training, but after a while, their progress starts to slow down. In fact, research suggests that the most significant muscle growth happens within the first three to six months of training. But after that, you hit a plateau where muscle growth continues, but at a much slower rate. In fact, this is one of the many challenges for muscle growth research because small changes become increasingly more difficult to measure with the various tools available in the research setting. Now, although the majority of muscle growth may occur relatively early into training, I don't believe that we completely stop growing until we're well into our lifting careers. So let's take a look at a research example that may present this slowing of muscle growth as individuals reach their growth potential. So for example, in a six month long resistance train study in non-resistance trained women, researchers found that the arm cross-sectional area increased by around 11% following the first three months of training. The following three months of training, however, resulted in only a 6% increase, even with continued hypertrophy-focused training. Now, this has also been observed in elite athletes like bodybuilders and weightlifters, who train specifically for muscle growth. For example, this was illustrated in a study that followed 13 elite weightlifters over the course of an entire year. Now, despite their rigorous training, the study found that key markers such as body mass, thigh circumference, body fat percentage, and muscle fiber size showed no significant changes over the entire year. And what was really interesting about this study was that all the athletes in the study were Finnish champions or national record holders. So they were already at a highly advanced level. Now, one might argue that elite weightlifters don't primarily train for muscle growth. And this would be true. However, it's still worth pointing out that their training didn't lead to significant muscle gains over such an extended period of time. Now, on the other hand, bodybuilders who are training specifically for muscle growth might offer more insight into the potential limits of muscle growth. In 1992, a study examined changes in muscle cross-sectional area and fiber size after 24 weeks of training in 10 competitive bodybuilders, comprising of five males and five females. The program they followed was heavily focused on bicep training, including barbell curls, alternating dumbbell curls, and all other bicep variations. After six months of this intense, highly focused training, the researchers found no significant changes in muscle fiber size, number, or cross-sectional area. This suggests that once an individual reaches a high level of muscular development, additional growth may be minimal, even with dedicated training. Now, these findings support the idea that muscle growth has a natural limit, which is likely influenced by genetic factors. After reaching a competitive level of development, further increases in muscle size are difficult to achieve. And looking at this from a biological standpoint, it also makes sense that endlessly pursuing larger muscle mass may not be optimal for overall health or longevity. And this is because excessive muscle tissue requires a significant amount of energy to be maintained. In fact, this increased need for energy is one of the many reasons why I work with clients to help build muscle in the first place, as it helps increase their daily energy intake and their BMR, and thus gives them the ability to maintain a leaner physique. However, according to theories of aging and stress, carrying too much muscle mass could potentially have negative impacts on long-term health and lifespan. So why does muscle growth slow down? Well, our bodies have built-in mechanisms to prevent excessive muscle growth. In fact, in animals, researchers have studied this using a method called synergistic ablation, where a muscle is overloaded to force it to grow. Even in these extreme conditions, the body activates these molecular breaks to limit how much muscle can grow, showing that our bodies are naturally geared to stop us from getting too big. Now, when it comes to tracking muscle growth, researchers often focus on easily measurable muscles like the biceps, the triceps, or the quadriceps. These muscles are commonly assessed using B-mode ultrasound to monitor changes in muscle thickness over time. Now, MRI or CT scans are considered the gold standard, but these are much more expensive and therefore less frequently used in muscle growth research due to the high cost. Studies have demonstrated that ultrasound measurements of muscle thickness are both reliable and valid. In fact, after eight to 12 weeks of training, typical increases in muscle thickness range from 0.2 to 0.3 centimeters, which corresponds to a four to 8% increase in muscle size. 
And that is exactly why I stress the importance of having patience when you're entering into a muscle building phase, as two to three millimeters is not necessarily something that you can visibly see when looking in a mirror. Now, these changes in muscle thickness offer valuable insights into the limits of human muscle growth and adaptation. But many individuals tracking their own progress utilize tools such as bioelectrical impedance analysis or BIA devices like the in-body assessment or a DEXA scan. So what do these types of studies typically see in terms of muscle growth? Well, research indicates that hypertrophy focused training can lead to increases in lean body mass gains of approximately one to two kilograms over an eight to 20 week period. Now, there are a number of methods that exist to measure how muscle grows, but ultrasound measurements of muscle thickness do offer a more direct and sensitive assessment of changes in specific body regions. And it's this precision that makes ultrasound a preferred tool for evaluating muscle development in both the research and clinical settings. So what is the bottom line here? Well, as a beginner, you'll likely see rapid progress, but as you become more experienced, that growth will start to slow down. The key is to stay consistent, be patient, and keep challenging yourself with a high amount of effort and focus on your long-term progress instead of expecting continuous rapid gains. Now, if you're looking to take your fitness journey to the next level, then consider exploring BeaFit, our comprehensive evidence-based workout app designed to cater to all experience levels. With hundreds of programs available, you can choose routines that will fit your goals, whether you're working out at home or in the gym. The app also offers a vast library of exercise demonstrations, the flexibility to adapt and modify your workouts as needed, and some awesome volume tracking analytics. You'll also be able to stay motivated with regular program updates and a supportive community to help you achieve your fitness goals. Check us out by visiting the App Store. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you've got questions, please leave those below and I'll see you in my next video.